Hey everybody, Dave Lindbergh in Hong Kong with another episode of the THD podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk to some guys working in tech and they are in Shenzhen. And so they just came back to Shenzhen. So I think it's very interesting to people to find out the process of how to get into China and we'll kind of understand their situation and maybe we'll get some insights on how some other people are getting in as well. But without delay, let's say thanks to our sponsor, the Alti Association Audio Loudspeaker Technology International. Um, they'll be at CES coming up here in 2023. So uh, look for their exhibit suite uh, at that event. But without delay, let's say hi to these guys. So Matthew Martin from Emporium Partners, he's in quarantine in Shenzhen at the moment. How you doing, Matt? Yeah, I'm good. Hi, Dave. Yeah, all right. And Harold Obreder from Emporium Mobile. He's at his office with some of his sample phones behind his head. Hey, Harry, how are you? Hi, Dave. Doing good. Thank you. Okay, so maybe uh, maybe Matt, you want to go first. So you uh, you you uh, you jumped out of Shenzhen. You needed a break. Went home to the UK for a month or so, and then maybe tell us about the process of getting back. How you went through yep. it. Okay. I mean, I think the, the first thing to say is that, um, you know, everybody's going to have a different story. You can talk to 10 people and you're going to have 10 very different answers. Uh, so I'll just give you some background. So um, I'm based here in Shenzhen. Uh, I'm running a, a semiconductor distribution business here. And, uh, and yeah, I was stuck here for, for two and a half years uh, during COVID and um, finally decided it was time to go home. And, uh, you know, gradually over time, the, the rules have been getting, you know, a little bit less restrictive, a little bit easier. There's never really a perfect time, but I just thought, you know, it's kind of now or never really. So, um, yeah, I went back to the UK for three weeks. I was, was to come through Hong Kong. Uh, there's, there's no direct flights from the UK to China right now. I think they are going to be some available um, pretty soon. Uh, but, you know, we have an office in Hong Kong and, uh, you know, I haven't seen those guys for, for two and a half years. And we've hired staff there, which I've never met before. <laughs> so I was always planning to spend some time um, in Hong Kong first and then try and uh, get across the border. So getting into Hong Kong was was pretty straightforward. Uh, and I got pretty lucky. So when I flew to the UK, the rule was that you would have seven days quarantine to get getting back into Hong Kong. Well, whilst I was away, they reduced that to three days. So, you know, straight away, I'm, I'm feeling lucky. So I got into Hong Kong. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. You have a 48-hour PCR test before your flight. You fill a form in online. You do your three days in quarantine, and then you're pretty much a free man. You have another four days of what they call amber code. So I couldn't go into a bar or a restaurant. So I was basically eating in 7-Eleven for four days. But I was out. And, 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 you know, I could get around. I could go to my office. And um, I had a really good week in Hong Kong. Um, and the tricky part is, is getting across the border into Shenzhen. Um, so, so my visa status helps. I, I actually have a family here. My wife is Chinese. So, so I'm here on a, a family visa. So straight away, that kind of you know, gives me more uh, of a priority. Uh, but there's a lottery. So each day, they release a block of 2,000 quarantine hotel rooms like this. You have to excuse the decoration. I think this was like a youth hostel or some kind of family hotel before. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think we're going to decorate our house like this. I got used to it. So, so basically, as soon as I landed in, in Hong Kong, um, my wife was, was doing this protest every day. So I think it's from sort of 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. You just register your details. And if you're successful, you'll, you'll be notified at 9 p.m. that night. If you're not successful, mm -hmm. you won't hear anything and you've got to keep trying. And it's not like first come, first served. It's not like if you miss it today, your chances improve tomorrow, you're back to square one. So I think I got my permission through after five days, which I'm told is, is pretty good. Um, you know, I, I've heard people who have been stuck in Hong Kong for, for weeks or months trying to get that um, quarantine room authorization. Some people have even tried, you know, flying to other cities, you know, Guangzhou or Xiamen and, and trying to do their quarantine there. Uh, so, yeah, I got mine in five days and, and I think that's pretty good going. So then uh, the procedure is have your PCR test, uh, 48 or 24 hours, I can't remember. 
before arriving, you have to then have another test at Hong Kong Customs, and it's Shenzhen Bay Port, uh, which is the only place that we can cross right now. Mm-hmm. So you have to book an, an appointment for another test there, uh, and I recommend you book that early. I mean, I was there at seven thirty in the morning for for an eight uh, a.m. test, and they open at eight a.m. And already it was hundreds of people in front of me when when I got there. But um, yeah, so I had the test, went through Hong Kong immigration. Then you have to sit in this big waiting hall and and they say it will take up to two hours for the test results. I was lucky it was about an hour. Um, They actually give you, um, you know, sometimes you go to a restaurant and you place your order and and they give you this electronic disc, which which buzzes and flashes. I, I had one of those. So, um, you know, once when that thing goes off, then you can go and, and you get a little wristband to say that you're negative and then you go through the normal immigration. So um, after clearing Hong Kong uh, customs in, in, in the normal way, um, then you just walk sort of 20 metres and, and then you're at the, the Shen mm. customs. Um, then you go through, I think there was, you have another test, even though you've just had one two hours ago, but obviously there's no kind of cross-border sharing of information. So you have to have another test. You don't have to wait for the results. They, um, they let you straight through. Um, there was very few foreigners that day. Uh, I only saw two and they kind of picked me out of the line and took me aside and helped me fill in the immigration form. They, you know, they were helpful. They were doing the best they could. Um, and then, yeah. There's, I think I ended up scanning three or four QR codes. There's, there's a diff QR code for where have you been. There's a QR code for where you're going. There's a QR code for have you been vaccinated. I mean, you name it, they have a QR code for it. And, of course, that's all in Chinese. I don't speak or, or read Chinese. So um, I did need to kind of take the photo of the QR code, send it to my wife. She'd have to fill the form in, send it back to me. So, you know, I'm lucky that I have that that kind of – ability to delegate but for someone just crossing the border on their own um that would be a minefield but uh I, again i consider myself lucky so from leaving my hotel in hong kong at sort of 6 a.m i actually arrived at this hotel around midday um which is good going i mean i've heard some people you know they're not arriving to their hotels until midnight mm-hmm. um it's pretty painless so after going through all of the procedures on the shenzhen side you then sit outside, which for about half an hour to an hour, waiting for the for the bus. Um, it's an, there's a roof, but it's an open area, so it is very hot. Bring lots of water. There's there's nowhere to buy any snacks or, or drinks um, while you're there. They put you on a bus. Um, you don't know where you're going. Um, you you get a little badge saying you're, that I'm going somewhere in Fu Tien, but you know other people are going to, to different districts. You, you don't know which hotel you're going to stay in. You, you can't book the hotel. You're just allocated a room randomly. Uh, and I guess they try and match it to, to roughly where you live. Um, mm. And I was lucky, you know, this place is fine. The food's been okay. Some hotels will allow you to order in or, or allow your family to bring food from, from home. This one doesn't for whatever reason, but um, it's been fine. Okay. So I'm due to get out tomorrow morning. The only possible issue i'm having as as you probably heard a lot of shenzhen went into lockdown on monday there's yeah. a, a new um surge in covid cases here so just over my shoulder here is the, the huachang bay electronics market that's all locked down yeah. um i live literally 200 meters uh, to, to the west here there's nine um tower blocks in in my community two of those are in lockdown since yesterday there's, there's some uh-huh. close contact of us, um, it's not even a positive case. It's a close contact, but uh, that's, a, that's all it takes. So they're on lockdown. So I'm due to go back home tomorrow morning. So touch wood, I'll get through. But if something happens overnight where, where my building goes into lockdown, I might have to stay in its hotel for another three, four, five days. I just don't know. But I think we'll be okay. At the moment, we're good. Mm-hmm. Now, for me to go home and finish the last three days of quarantine at home, my family have to move out. So right now they're searching for a hotel, yeah. they were hoping that they could go to Darmish or, you know, the nice end of town with the beach. Yeah. Well, because of this um, COVID situation, no one from Futian is allowed out. So they're going to try and find some, you know, local hotel just to hang out for a few days so that I can go home and finish my quarantine there. 
if they can't get a hotel, I'll have to stay here. So even though I'm on day six of, of my seven day quarantine, I'm not 100% sure I'm getting out tomorrow morning. I'm fairly confident. Um, I, I think to summarize, I mean, just be ready for anything. I mean, you know, don't make plans. Um, just random stuff happens all the time. So this morning they came to my door and I thought I was going to have my usual you know, test, but they tested my phone and my pillow, but they didn't test me. <laughs> and uh, I think it's because this new variant, this, this BA5 variant, which is the one going around here now, they, they think that you know, it's very easy to spread and it, it can survive on surfaces for a long time. Right. So I guess they're, use, they're using us like lab rats, you know, let's test these guys are already in quarantine let's test their phone and their pillow to see what shows up very bizarre okay and and so what, what were the kind of the hotel costs like in hong kong what was the room per night uh in in yeah i mean uh so i was staying in um the best western in on hong kong island now normally i would consider that like a 500 hong kong dollar night hotel we were paying uh, close to 2000 okay and then even even after I, I checked out, so I was there for three days, then I could move into um, another hotel. But because I had this amber code and because that was such a new rule, that was only only a recent change from the from the seven day quarantine to the three days. Not all the hotels in Hong Kong were really ready for that. So there was a very limited choice of where I could stay with this amber code. So I ended up staying in the Holiday Inn. Uh, again, I would consider that a 500 Hong Kong dollar a night hotel. I was paying 2000 Okay. And then in this Shen hotel, yeah, yeah th this hotel. So for seven nights, including all the food, um, I paid uh, 3,700 RMB. So what's that kind of like 600 US? So it's not cheap. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people watching the, yeah, you can find hotels most times. Cheap hotels, maybe 200 to 300 renminbi. Regular Western hotels are maybe, you know, 400 to 1,000, depending on what they are. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. So that's a, it's a good kind of summary. Um, and Harry, so you did things a little different. You went on a vacation to Philippines where you contemplated uh, becoming a boat captain, but uh, failed the test. <laughs> I'm kidding. But anyway, <laughs> Harry was on vacation and then you had to get back into China. So how did you get back to China? I think your flight is something interesting people would like to know. Um, so we, same, same story as Matt, uh, basically we were looking for direct flights and the thing is that you don't really find direct flights like a normal booking platforms but what we found out there's always agents but they're all in china chinese speaking agents who arrange charter flights and actually you don't find any flights out of manila to china but there is every thursday one flight which is a chartered flight mm. but to get on that flight is a little bit difficult let's say like this you have to buy the ticket first which was per person we were three people uh, my wife and my daughter uh, it's 11,500 RMB that's around 10 times higher than during normal times let's say like this per person, per person. wow per person <laughs> yeah um, and then and then you 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 buy this ticket from an agent and then they will inform you that you have to go into pre-flight quarantine uh, three days before the flight, the, the departure. And before you're allowed to do the quarantine, you have to do a COVID test in order to be able to go into the uh, quarantine hotel. And for all of these things, they ask you to buy hazmat suits, like three hazmat suits for each person. You have to have 20 masks, FFP2, FFP2. You have to have face shield, gloves. You have the whole thing. And they will really check it. So what happens is you go to the, you, you, you take a, a, an Uber to the testing site. Mm -hmm. And then you get out of the Uber, you wear all this stuff. 
you go into a tent, they will do the test, uh, throat, nose, twice. Um, and then you go to the next tent, then they do the same process again. And it's really, actually, it was really painful. For me, it was still okay. But for my daughter, she it was a hard time. Then you have to remove the hazmat suit when you go out of the tent, throw it away. And then uh, you go back. And then the next day you will be informed which quarantine hotel you can stay in the Philippines. So this is not included in the price. This okay. is an extra three and a half thousand RMB per person for two nights, three days in the hotel. So then you check into the hotel you have to wear a hazmat suit again. You have to completely suit up. Um, you check in. You, you, you get the room number assigned. They will not allow you to have more than two people in the room. So in our case, a family, they would not allow us. So we have to buy two rooms, basically. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they charge you for three. Kids are the same price as adults. Mm -hmm. Every day you have the test, uh, the PCR test um, um, through the nose. Mm -hmm. Again, really painful. And then on the third day before the flight, they will inform you when you're allowed to check out, which is super early in advance, basically. They'll, they'll tell you, uh, in our case, it was like we were informed at 9.30 that we have to leave to the airport um from the quarantine hotel but the flight is only 2 30 a.m in the morning oh. again you suit up you yeah. suit up you go down uh it was in the basement of the hotel because the the, the normal people didn't want to make be mixed up with us yeah so and then actually uh we had to wait it, it's it's all a waiting game you wait in the hotel you wait in the checkout lobby then you get in a bus They bring you from the bus to the airport. And then in the airport, uh, they make sure you only go to this counter. That's like a security or somebody takes care. And from the counter, you go uh, all in the hazmat suit. You're not allowed to take it off. You're not allowed to eat anything. You're not allowed to buy any souvenirs, whatever. So, but basically they will, they will stretch it out and make everybody bored or everybody be, be waiting at the gate uh, at least three and a half hours before. And it's really just waiting. There's no other business at that time in Manila airport. You know, there's a few flights going out mm -hmm. and then you have to wear that hazmat suit the whole time. Um, then you fly, you arrive, we arrived in Guangzhou. Uh, and then it's a waiting game again. So they, I think we arrived around 4.30, then one hour waiting. Then they brought us to the first test on the airport. Uh, you do the test, then you do the immigration. Um, then you do, you wait again because you will be assigned the hotel. You basically, you, you, you wait your turn. Uh, you, you, you go into the bus. I mean, you have no chance. It's like, you know, it's just, okay, wait here. The block in the, 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 the block, block the way in front of you and then they open it and the next 50 people can go and then so on and so on. You come to the hotel, they do immediately another test. First you pay. Um, you, you pay, I think we, we did a down payment for 8,000 RMB for the three people of us. But then I got back half of it because it's we, we were allowed to be in one room together, which is nice as a family. Okay. Uh, and the room was 300, 380 per day plus 100 RMB per meal per person. So, no, for three meals, basically breakfast, lunch, and dinner, it's 100 per person. Um, so, total 680 per, per day. Right. For the whole, for the three of us. And then on the first, and then you're in the hotel, then, then you do the COVID test again, then they do a blood test. I don't know, Matthew, if they did it with you as well. And you, so they took blood, which is... Yeah, I did some of the yeah. finger, fingertip. Um, I think you said it's a malaria test, which, you know, I've been in, in, I've been in the UK and Hong Kong. 
I don't know why I have a malaria test, but um, no, the do it with everybody. Yeah. So yeah, which was again for if you have kids, that's not nice. And uh, my daughter asked me, "Will they do this again?" And I said, "Of course not. Why would they do another blood test?" And of course, on the last day, they did it again. Of course, you have everyday COVID tests, uh, except I think day four and day six or something like this. But mm -hmm. then on the last day, they did another COVID test, of course, blood test. Plus, they took like, I would say, at least eight or nine different samples from the bathroom, from the doorknob, from wherever they felt like, let's take some, some samples. And... Yeah, uh, we were lucky. They didn't want to, uh, in the beginning, they didn't want to let us go back after day seven because it's seven plus three, right? Mm -hmm. Because we had no family member who can pick us up. And for the community in Shenzhen, it's too far to go to Guangzhou to, to drive you back. But eventually I could convince them. So there's always a little bit of legal room to have one of my employees actually picking me up and driving me or picking us up and driving us to Shenzhen. And then the last three days, you're supposed on the seventh day after your last COVID test, you will get a green code for a day. Mm -hmm. So basically that you travel back. And, and after that, actually, our green code, and then it should be getting back to yellow but it never went back to yellow so our code was actually green and we went out uh, for to do the test every day so we were not we were not uh, nobody checked if we are the last three days if we are in the in in our apartment or not hmm. but we had to do the test so we just went out went to the test and went back we did the home quarantine but yeah, nobody, nobody said anything. And of course, it's interesting. Uh, you know, tomorrow is my day seven, so maybe they will. I will have another blood test. Maybe they will come in and swab the whole place. I don't know yet. You know, ask me in a couple of days. But yeah. uh, it's interesting that that you went out to get your test, like yeah. like the normal normal people there, right? Because I've told you know when I go home for the next three days, they're basically going to seal the door, you know, and put an electronic alarm on the door. Oh, uh, they want to. Uh, no. No, Hopefully not. Yeah. They, 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 I don't know. The, the last three days are really relaxed already. We were quite happy actually, um, and then it also doesn't feel like quarantine if you're in your own own apartment. That's nice. But uh, there's different stories, as you said. I mean, first of all, um, we would not have been allowed a, a transport, a private transport, which means we would have to stay three days, three more days there. Uh, but on the other side, you can choose to book a train from Guangzhou to Shenzhen, a high-speed train, where you meet much more people than in a private transport. Right. So it's, yeah. it's a little bit confusing. And, and uh, I mean, I guess extreme cases. My friend was, he arrived from Singapore two days after, after, uh, after we arrived. And in his hotel, they would... They would put the food outside the door, which is normal. From in our hotel, we just hear, okay, the food, the food is coming. So we open the door, we take it in. But in his hotel, they were not allowed to open the door unless they receive a call from the reception. And the reception will tell them you're allowed to open the door now. And then after after he took his food, the next one took his got the call to take his food. So they go sometimes to extreme lengths for to this, like crazy. And yeah. yeah, and one thing I forgot, which is super stressful. I don't know if it was the same for you. On the last day before you, or actually on the day when you have the flight, that's the day when you have to get the HS code from the Chinese embassy. So until that day, you don't know if you actually... If you actually get this blue code or HS code from the embassy and if you're allowed to board and then you have to, of course, upload all the data, everything is in, in, in Chinese and there's loads and loads of forms in the content as well. But what, what's strange for me is they would, they would charge you up front and, and 
basically you're losing everything if you don't get the HS code from the embassy. Yeah. And if you fly on a Sunday, I don't know if, who is actually doing this approval of the HS code. So we had one one uh, um, in our quarantine hotel and we had a group, so we know that her son didn't get the HS code. So they lost the whole flight, the quarantine, so all the money, and they had to do all it all over again. So it's yeah, I didn't yeah. have to, uh, I didn't have that issue because you know I was I'm crossing a land border from Hong Kong. Yes, um, yeah, you're and, right. And, well, and there was no there was no charge at all. Yeah, you know, it was just the, the the complete uncertainty of when I'm going to get across. You know, it took me five days. You know, I think it's taken other people weeks. The day I was applying, you know, for these two thousand rooms, mm -hmm. there was about twelve thousand people applying every day. And yeah. I, some people said when they were applying, it was twenty thousand people every day for for two thousand places. Okay, so I mean, so yeah. basically, so basically, Hong Kong is a special case that don't need to issue this HS code, that self declaration yeah. code. Everywhere else in the world, when you fly in on the day of the flight. That's the only day you can apply for it. And if, if uh, you don't get it, you're not allowed to, to board the plane. And, uh, and, and actually, I mean, I understand the companies who are, who are chartering those planes, that they are so strict because China would immediately block them if there's more than 5% or five people on the plane. I think they, they recently changed the rule, mm -hmm. rules. They would block this flight for at least two to four weeks. And if you then have another, so if you, if you have positive COVID cases on the plane, and if you do it again, then you block like eight weeks. Probably that's the reason why there's no flights of, out of UK now. That's the reason why from Austria, I'm originally from Austria, there were no flights for months because of that, because China just blocked the, the, the route. And I, I think that changed now. Before it was only able, you were only able to go from your country of residence directly to China. So we had to we had to prove in the Philippines that we actually have a residency there. Uh, oh. Before we were, yeah, we had to do that. Oh, so people that are thinking of, I know some people are thinking of flying to the Philippines and then trying to get a flight from Philippines to China. That might not work they have to fake a residency if they, <laughs> they if if they want to do this but yes it, 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 it's not easy but what we have we we have an apartment in the philippines so the apartment uh, administration issued us a letter that we said okay those are those three people are residences residents have a residence here in the philippines and but yeah, that's that's uh, because they want to avoid that you go from let's say from the U.S. to the Philippines and and then to China because you don't get a direct flight from the U.S. or U.K. So you use a third party country to to hop basically to transfer there. Right. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, it's sounds... maybe. It's, it's a service, though. It's you know any of these problems gives a business opportunity, right? You know, and before earlier we talked about agents. You know, you got agents booking, you know, chartering flights. Uh, I heard there were an, another route from Hong Kong into the mainland is is take a bus to Zhuhai across the bridge, and um, I heard that there were agents arranging that. And I think I think Dave, you were telling me, you know, it cost like a thousand US dollars or something to take a bus to Zhuhai, but I think they they've stopped that now. But my family, my family were in the UK for six months. They came back here in May, and they did use an agent um, to arrange the, the quarantine hotel. And, and I was you know, prepared to do the same, but apparently they've closed that loophole now. Yeah, well, like like any time you start adding government things, there's always a black market that pops up. And uh, yeah. you know, so I, I mean, just dig. <laughs> if people have friends over here, dig into it. Ask them if there's any. I don't know, sneaky ways to do this because uh, you'd be surprised. There's always money makes things happen. Um, but, you know, it is expensive. Like I've heard flights from London being upwards of 4,000 pounds to uh, 
to Shanghai in economy right now. Um, a lot of the flights from U.S. are completely canceled. There's a little bit of tit for tat going on between Chinese canceling flights, airlines canceling flights, and then yeah. U.S. carriers retaliating. So it's it's not getting any easier. But I guess um, I guess that's kind of just a good snapshot. I think that that gives people uh, kind of an overview. I mean, probably scares a lot of people away. But uh, yeah, I would encourage anybody if, if they have any uh, stories about their experience getting into China, just chuck it in the comments below. I'm sure everybody watching this will be interested to, to hear other people's war stories, whether it was easier or, or more difficult uh, to get into China at the moment. Um, so, all right. So, uh, Matt, do you have anything to add before we call it a day here? No, I mean, if you're thinking of coming to China, um... You know, just be ready for anything, be prepared to be flexible. And just remember that even when you're here, that doesn't mean it's all good. You know, half of Shenzhen is locked down now. If I knew that, I could have stayed in the UK another week, right? So you just never know. You have to be ready for anything. Uh, Harry, any, any words of advice? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are not in lockdown yet, but the community next to us is already in lockdown Uh our pools are closed, the gym is closed. I have five people not being able to go to the office uh, because their communities are in lockdown and not because they have cases, it's just some close contact. I would, a big, big thing for me is like schools already switched back to online classes. And a main reason why we came back was to be back at the first day of school, which started on 15th of August for international schools. And this is a real big disappointment. That's a, I didn't, honestly, I didn't want to come back because I, I expected these things to happen. Right. I told my daughter, we can do the online class from the boat as well. Uh, but yeah, I was, I was uh, overruled by her. <laughs> and, and one thing for the flight, which might be interesting. I think that's actually by not allowing too many flights, that's the way of China. Even they, they removed the quarantine, they, they, they went down with the quarantine from three weeks to 10 days. But if you don't allow enough flights, you can still control how many, how many people are coming in, right? right? And basically, same as you met, on our flight, there were like 99% Chinese. There's not many foreigners coming in. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah, everybody uh, like, subscribe, share this around and uh, put your comments. And if anybody has any experiences, like I said, please jot that down. I'm sure a lot of people will be interested. Oh, so uh, Matt and Harry, thanks for joining today. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Dave. Okay. Bye-bye everybody.